Well, Mark and I are still at Richmond Beach Park on the shores of Puget Sound. And the topic for today is showing a predicate argument to be invalid using the method of interpretations. So you notice I didn't say proving a predicate argument invalid, I said showing a predicate argument to be invalid. My logic teacher at the UW, Mark Cohen, used to stress that we, sh we, we should only use the word prove and proof for, for actual natural deduction proofs. And if we're demonstrating something in another way, i.e. by truth tables or by interpretations or by some other method that's not a proof, we use a different word. We don't say we're proving, we say we're showing or demonstrating or something like that. So this won't be a proof, won't be a, technically it won't be a natural deduction proof, but we're going to show this, this pattern of reasoning to be invalid by constructing an interpretation. And on this interpretation, if we interpret the symbols in this way, then we will have obviously true premises and an obviously false conclusion, which shows that this form or pattern of reasoning is capable of, of giving us true premises and a false conclusion and therefore is invalid. So, yep. so this is very much like constructing a counterexample to an argument. It's, it's very much like showing an argument to be invalid through the method of logical form. Showing a, a similar logical form yields an invalid argument. An interpretation of a sentence or an argument in predicate logic involves a couple things. For an, to produce an interpretation for an argument, we state the universe of discourse, that is to say what the variables are ranging over, and uh, in this case the universe of discourse shall be the universe itself. It's we'll, everything. It's everything. So we'll say our universe of discourse is everything, the entire universe. So the X is ranging over everything in the universe. We only have one variable in use. And then we specify uh, what our predicate constants stand for. And so, Mark, how do you want to interpret this symbolized pattern of reasoning? Well, I've thought this one over already, so it's mm -hmm. going to seem really easy. And it's not yeah. always super, super easy. Yeah. I'll give you a couple tips, though. Uh, keep it simple. I mean, just stay away from subatomic particles. Stay away from weird, irrational numbers. Do things like cats dogs, rocks, plants, uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it'll be able to, you'll be able to do it in your head a whole lot easier. And if you keep it simple, the guy you're talking to will probably be able to understand your point a whole lot better. Yeah. So I'm going to stick with good, simple, good, simple good things. Good I also find that if I start off with a false conclusion, then it might be easier to, um, to kind of fill in the blanks to make the premises true. Mm. And that's not a rule. Um, I notice these two guys are the same. I, I just have to give you a suggestion. Um, Let's have A stand for dogs. I've okay. already thought this through. Sometimes it takes some erasing, but have AX stands for is a dog. Is it? Okay. Is a dog. So uh, X is a dog. Okay. And so let's have uh, B stands for is an animal. Okay, so BX would be X is an animal. Okay. And this, this would take some thinking on your part. I, I'm ahead because I already thought this through. Let's have CXB is a mammal. Okay, so X is a mammal. What I was trying to do is come up with true premises and a false conclusion. Now if you look at this, we have all, all dogs are mammals. So for all things, if something's a dog, then it is a mammal. All mm -hmm. the dogs are, excuse me, all dogs are animals. Oh wait a minute. All dogs are animals. Oh yeah, that's yeah. animals, yeah. The second premise is all dogs are mammals. Okay. okay, so... And then the so conclusion that, would be all animals are mammals, which is clearly false. It's false that all animals are mammals. And yet but the premises are true. It's true that all dogs are animals. It's true that all dogs are mammals. It's false that all animals are mammals. So uh, I've come up with a way of kind of filling in these blanks, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, to make the premises obviously true to anybody. The conclusion is obviously false to anybody. Very good. And if we can actually have an instance where the premises are actually true and the conclusion actually false, it's possible, obviously, to have the premises true and the conclusion false. By definition, that would make an invalid argument. Yes, or argument form. And so, so what have we done? We We've interpreted this, we provide an interpretation for this, an assignment uh, 
that tells us what the A stands for, dogs, the B stands for animals, and the C stands for mammals. So then we read this for any X. If X is, an a, is a dog, then X is a animal. an animal. And then for any X, if X is a dog, then X is a mammal. And your conclusion then says, for any X, if X is a animal, then X is a mammal. And so common sense says that the premises are true. Every dog is indeed a uh, and every dog is indeed a mammal, and common sense tells us that the conclusion's false. And you just need to pick some ordinary groups of things, again, like dogs, cats, and then maybe Labradors, Labrador Retrievers, or tigers. So you have maybe a couple groups in your head, dogs, cats, and then maybe something a little bit smaller, tigers, uh, chihuahuas, mm -hmm. and then something completely different like rocks. And usually if you just keep those kinds of concepts in your head, you can kind of juggle them around there, and if it's an invalid argument, you'll be able to come up with a an, way of filling in those things. Interpretation that shows true premises, false conclusion. And it can happen. So you could use food and hamburgers and hot dogs and burritos. Yeah, just keep it simple. But things like that. If this was a valid argument, it'd be impossible to do this. That's right. And, and if you can't fill in all these things, you know, I, should, if I should say, if you personally are unable to fill those in, it's really not going to tell us anything, is it, it? That's right. If you can't come up with an interpretation that shows true premises and a false conclusion, that doesn't show, that does not show the argument yeah, to be valid. Because maybe you're just not being particularly sharp today, and you're not being imaginative five more enough minutes, you'd be able something. to figure it out. Right. So, so this method can be used to show that this argument is invalid, to, to show that an argument is invalid. But you can't We use don't it. use it to prove an argument valid. No. But what do we use to prove an argument like this valid? Natural deduction Natural would do Natural deduction it. would do it. Yeah. The interpretation that we constructed for this is the analog in, in predicate logic for a row of a truth table. It's similar to a row of a truth table in truth functional logic in some ways. So This works pretty well on easy predicate proofs. If you've got a super, super complicated one, this much you harder. might need to be a flaming rock star logician to be able to do it in your head. Or a nuclear uh, physicist. Yeah, it just really can be tough. But as long as the premises and conclusions are on the simple side, usually with a certain amount of time, you can find a way of interpreting it so that the premises are true and the conclusion is right. false. And one interpretation is enough. Yeah. One interpretation assigning you know, meanings to the predicate constants to the telling you the domain, the universe of discourse, and so forth. Uh, one interpretation showing true premises and a false conclusion is enough. You win to, you, to prove the pattern of reasoning invalid. And of course, if we had had a singular term in here, we would have to have assigned a singular object, an entity, to that singular term. So if we'd have had G is H, we didn't need to say who G is. Maybe G is Ginger Smith, mm -hmm. or Ginger Smith's dog, or something. So, in some ways, an interpretation is like a model universe mm -hmm. that shows you a way in which the premises could be true and the conclusion could be fa false for this pattern of reasoning. And uh, predicate logic doesn't have truth tables. This is uh, the closest thing to truth tables that we have in predicate logic. Okay, well, I hope that helps you get into the method of showing arguments invalid using interpretations in predicate logic.